All right, so I'm gonna show how to replace the screen on this ThinkPad second generation X1 Extreme. Okay, so first thing you wanna do is disconnect the battery or make sure it's off if, you, um, if you're able to shut it down. Yeah, make sure to shut it down first. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is take a PH1 or JIS1 screwdriver and remove all the screws from the bottom. So there's one, two, three it looks like these screws actually stay attached to the plate so just undo them you don't need to completely pull them out four five six and seven all right so disconnect all seven screws from the bottom let's see we should be able to lift this cover up okay so i'm just pulling it up with my fingers like this all right then once it comes up the bottom half it looks like it swings up like this and you can lift it out okay so yeah all the screws stay in place so you don't need to remove them from the plate set that aside okay since we have this open we can go ahead and look at what's inside it looks like there's two m.2 ssd slots um, this one is using a pcie nvme ssd I don't know if this also supports PCIe NVMe. Some of them only support the M.2 SATA. Um, I, I don't know if it will support it. If you wanted to check, um, you can buy one, make sure it's somewhere you can return it and then give it a shot. But um, yeah, this one's definitely M.2 PCIe NVMe, excuse me. Um, to remove them, you just take the one screw out that's holding it in place. And then it looks like there's a thermal pad here. So probably under this, there's also a thermal pad. Um, you do want to peel off this yellow layer if you're gonna install a new SSD on that slot. But basically once you take the screw out, you just lift it up at an angle slightly like this, grab the sides, and then you can just wiggle it and pull it out just like this, okay? So here you can see there's a thermal pad there, okay? So to put it back, same thing, put it back at that angle, push it in, okay? And then drop it down. Okay, if you are going to change the SSD, you do want to make sure to clone over the operating system, or if you're going to install like Windows from scratch, you can do that as well. Okay, all right. Then underneath these flaps, there's RAM. So there's they're actually only using one of the slots. To remove the RAM, there's these two tabs on the sides. You just pull them over to the sides like this. The RAM will pop up. Once it pops up, you can wiggle and pull this back. And here you go, the RAM is, if you can see that, um, this is a 16 gig stick, mm -mm, PC4 2666V. So as long as you get a PC4 2666V matching, you can put uh, any size you want there. Um, usually 16 gigs is already more than enough, but if you want to take advantage of dual channel memory and get it to run a little bit faster, you'll want another 16 gig stick, okay? Okay, so put it back at an angle like that, and then after that you just push it down. It should clip into place. Okay, the wireless card, there's the CMOS battery here. The wireless card um, comes out just like the SSD, the one screw. The antennas you pull up from the tail. I usually use my two fingernails like this and just pop it up. Um, if you're not sure how to do that, you can watch my other videos uh, on how to do that. Anyways. Um, the RAM and SSDs, you don't have to remove the battery first, but if you're going to mess with like these LCD cables and stuff, you want to disconnect the battery before you do that, okay? It's very dangerous messing with the LCD cables if you don't remove the battery and um, drain the power from the computer first. Alright, so let's see. This battery, it looks like it's one of those models where you actually pry it up from the front here. So you just want to, I don't know if I can show this on camera clearly, but let's see. So there's a little gap here for, oops, for that connector. So you actually want to pry it up there. Let's see here, just like this. It'll pop up slightly. After you do that, you can push the whole cable forward like this, and then the whole connector comes out. And to put it back, of course, you put it back at the angle with this back part first, slide it back, and then you can push this back down. So I'll do that later after I install the screen. Um, we can actually take the whole battery out just to be safe so it doesn't like fall back in and reconnect itself while we're working on it. So actually there's all these speaker cables connected. Let's see if I can just take it all out at once. So keep the screws in order. You don't want to get them mixed up. They can be different size, shapes, and lengths. Um, so I always like to keep the same screws where they are. And yes, they are different size, shapes, and lengths. So 
um, keep them in order. It looks like the two middle ones are longer. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna disconnect the speaker cable here. So to do that, I just get my use my fingernails on the wings and I kind of just wiggle it as I pull. Just keep wiggling and it pops out just like that. All right, so the speakers, they lift out pretty easily. There's no screws holding it, just these little rubber things to keep them from vibrating too much. All right, this, the battery lifts up from the front like this and then you have to slide it out. These little things here latch to the battery. Okay, so we're just gonna take the whole speaker setup away with the battery to make it a little bit easier because I don't wanna have to unguide the wires. All right, you got the trackpad cable here. You got the, this looks like the keyboard connector. I don't know why there's so many. I think this is the keyboard backlight, the keyboard, and then the, the cable that goes to the motherboard. All right. Um, all these connectors are basically the same. You just lift up these little latches and then you can pull the cable out. Um, I don't want to mess with this stuff too much because I'm just doing a screen replacement. But there's the latch on this side here. This one, the latch is also on this side. Okay. And then you got also the latch on this side. Okay. So if you wanted to disconnect those, you can. There's, I think this is the fingerprint sensor. Let me open it and double check. Yep. Okay, I think that looks like, yeah, that's the fingerprint sensor. Okay, and then the charge port. Okay, it looks like the charge port's on a separate connector. It actually connects right here. It's a little camouflage. They put some tape, but this one you can kind of wiggle and pull it out, but you do have to take out, um, it looks like this bracket, okay? Um, and after that you can lift this out It doesn't look like you have to take out the hinge But on some of them you have to also um, remove the hinge screws and lift the hinge up slightly to get this out All right Anyways, then you got the fans the same the connectors are just like the speaker connector. You just wiggle it and pull it back And that's pretty much all there is in here I think this is the LCD LVDS connector and then this is probably like the webcam connector and stuff All right so anyways, after you disconnect the battery, you want to press and hold the power button for about 10 to 15 seconds. I probably should have mentioned that earlier because I don't know if people just skip ahead and then do whatever. Um, but anyways, I'm going to hold the power button for about 10 to 15 seconds, drain any power from this. This is just to protect the board underneath, so that way if you accidentally short something or touch it on something um, conductive, it's not going to damage it. All right. I'm going to put this back just to be safe. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned this is a CMOS or the BIOS battery. And you usually don't have to remove that because there's this little uh, button here that there's a hole in the back. If for some reason your computer's not turning on, like powering on at all, sometimes you can use a little needle to push on that little button, press and hold it for about 10 to 15 seconds, and that should reset the BIOS for you. Okay, I'm just going to put that one, tighten that one screw lightly just so that I can turn the computer over. So now we're gonna remove the screen. So to remove the screen on this model, there's a whole bunch of adhesive, so it's pretty difficult. If you can, you actually wanna peel from the top here, but usually it's tough to get underneath this piece. But if you can, um, peel from the top forward like this, okay? I've already peeled this off one time, so it's a bit easier. Um, some people like to use heat, but this is plastic, so if you use heat, make sure it's not going to get too hot that it melts the plastic. Some people use like little heat packs or something. Um, but yeah, so you peel from the outside in, okay? And you just do this on the whole thing. Okay, just like this. If you ruin the adhesive, you might have to put some new adhesive, so keep that in mind. Okay. So just peel from the outside in. This is the opposite of the other models where usually you um, pull from the inside out, but those ones are usually because we're trying to undo clips. So this one doesn't have any clips actually, it's all just adhesive. Okay. Okay. All right, the bottom part's a little bit more difficult because there's more adhesive, but basically just keep pulling it up like that okay there we go so now we got that bezel off just set it aside somewhere safe so that stuff doesn't stick to it okay and then the screen if I remember correctly there's actually nothing holding it in place the only thing holding it was the adhesive around here so what you do now you just tip the screen forward like this okay 
the screen will fall over. Again, make sure that you press and hold the power button down. That's very important. All right, and then this, there's not much slack, so you wanna be careful. You don't wanna pull the screen forward too much. You can risk damaging it. And we're gonna peel up this uh, tape here. If you want, you can use a tool to do this. You can use your fingernails, you can use whatever. Um, this kind of tool usually helps with it a little bit, so you can kind of use that. Press and hold down here, so that way while you're peeling the tape, it doesn't just tear that up. Okay, use the flat side. But here you can see this adhesive is pretty difficult to get out. Once I get out quite a bit to the corner, I'll just grab it and then peel it up like this. Okay, and then there's a little metal tab here. I don't know if you can see it. Let me try and zoom in. I don't know if there's an enough, enough light for you to see, but there's the little metal tab here. I just use my fingernail and then flip that up. Once you flip that up, you can grab the tab on both sides and then towards the bottom of the clip, I use my fingernail to push the thing back, kind of wiggle it, and there you go. So that's how you disconnect the LCD. So again, this one, there's not much slack, so it's a little difficult to, um, to get to, but yeah, that's how you do it. All right, so we'll get the replacement screen. Put that there, okay. And same thing, you just grab the bottom and then you have to guide it in the slot and pull it forward. So again, there's not much slack, so it makes it kind of difficult. I don't know if there's an easier way to do this, but uh, this is how I have to do it. All right. You might have to use the screen to kind of slide it forward into place, um, just because there's no slack to kind of pull the connector forward, okay. Just like this. Again, this one's pretty tough, so I'm just sliding the screen forward to try and get it in place and then pulling this in. But yeah, it's pretty tough. And you kind of want to get it to go in, oops, going off camera. And you want to try and get it to go in as straight as possible. You don't want it to go in at an angle. Sometimes it helps to use like one hand to like hold the screen up like this and then do it this way. But do whatever works best for you. Okay. It works better for me to like hold the screen up with one hand and pull this with the other hand. So there you go, you can see the screen is connected in place. And then you just put that latch down. Sounds like somebody's at the door. I hope that's not a customer. All right, but just like that. And then use this to pull the adhesive forward and tape it down. All right, here we go. Let's zoom back out might be a customer. Right, anyways, flip this back up and then we'll lean it this way. I always like to plug in the battery and test it first um, before I put back in the bezel just to make sure it's working. So let's take this out. Oh, I guess it's my brother. That was quick. Okay, so we'll take that out. Get the battery with the speakers. Okay. And then slide the bottom in first. Oops, sorry, it's going off the camera. So slide the bottom in first because those little latches down there. Okay, then you can get the speakers back in their spots and then drop the battery down. Okay, you can put back in the speaker connector here, just like this. Squeeze, pinch the two things together. Okay, make sure that the battery did go underneath those notches there. And then we'll put back in the screws for the battery. Again, the, there are two longer screws, and then they go on the middle side. The shorter ones go on the corners. Okay. All right. So usually I'll just put them in loosely first to make sure all the screws can go in, and then I'll tighten them all down. Okay, just like that. Tighten that one in as well. There we go. Okay, and then again for the battery, you want to get the back of the back wings in first, slide it over, and then push this back down, just like that. And that's pretty much all there is to it. When you put the bottom cover in, you want to slide the bottom in first, and then swing it back down. Okay, tighten up the middle screw here, 
just like that. Tighten up this other middle screw and pretty much tighten up all the screws, okay? Um, if you wanted to test it first, you actually don't want to tighten all these screws. I'm just assuming it's working, but in the rare case that it doesn't work, then you end up having to take everything apart again. So hopefully that won't happen, because um, if it does, then I'm going to have to order another screen. But, okay, and since we don't have the bezel on yet, you're going to want to open this with the screen still laying down on the table, because you don't want it to just fall forward. Okay, just making sure all the screws are tight. There we go. All right. So let's test and see. Sometimes we do have to plug it in um, for it to power on, but uh, let's just open it like this so you can see the screens there. Press the power button, and hopefully it's turning on. Okay, this keyboard lit up, so it should be turning on. And there we go. We got the Lenovo screen. So it looks like this screen's good to go. I'm going to peel off this protective layer. Um, be careful because the screen will just fall out. Okay, let me shut this down. Okay, and then we're just going to peel this thing off. Again, make sure you don't drop the screen because it isn't being held in by anything until we put back the bezel. Alright, just like this, peel it off. Okay. And then you can throw that away, or you can stick it on the old broken screen and keep that as a souvenir or something. Alright, so there we go. And then we'll just take the bezel and we'll put this back in place. Okay, my head might get in the way a little bit because I have to see what I'm doing. Usually it helps to do the top corners first so that way you can line it up. Let me actually turn this upside down so it makes it easier for me. Okay. So just like this, line up the little, the top corners first. Okay, and then just push that slowly in place. Line up the other top corner. And same thing, just get it all lined up and push that in place. All right, make sure these line up as well. You wanna make sure that little camera thing lines up. All right, and then you just push it down. Make sure all the adhesive goes on. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Just make sure you get the adhesive to stick down well. Don't put too much pressure around the frame of the screen because you can um, damage the screen that way. But uh, just make sure that all the adhesive is sticking down onto the frame and the screen and you should be good to go. So that's pretty much all there is to this. Hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, like and subscribe. Help others find my videos. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And we'll do one more test. Power it on. Keyboard lights up. That's good. And we are good to go. All right. Thank you for watching. See you in another one. Bye.